Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, the legal and government correspondent, and it's a municipal election season. We've been interviewing mayor, mayoral and councilman positions. Today is District 3, and candidate Paul Malika is our guest. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for the invite. You bet. Uh, so I guess Paul and I met back uh, during football season yeah. when, uh, uh, you know, at, at football games for... Um, uh, I guess it would be his metal boy, but um, we have some set questions. As much as I'd like to go off script, we're trying to make it fair that way. So very first questions, tell us about yourself, your qualifications, and your background. Okay. Um, I've been coming to Hudson for 31 years. I have been in transportation. Um, we have, uh, as a family, been living here for 25 years. I've been in District 3 for 25 years. Um, I've had the opportunity to take off the Hudson system and enjoy 25 years of watching my kids grow up. And uh, it's, it's been very enjoyable. It's been a great town, a great town to move to. And so where are you from originally? I grew up in Southern Minnesota, Faribault, Minnesota. Okay. But 25 years here and um, all your children born then here? All the kids, well, they're born in the cities, but all raised here. Yeah, we, we moved to Hudson when Tucker was two months old. Okay, and that's your oldest? My oldest, yeah. Okay. And uh, you mentioned in transportation. Anything yeah. more you want to say about that? Uh, no, I, I've, I've helped build companies, run companies, and it's been a 27, 24 hour a day, seven day a week job. And Okay. Well, this kind of bleeds into the next question is, why do you want to serve on the city council? If you've been in the community for 25 years uh, and not, you know, running for office right. before, why now? Um, I've been in, like I said, in Hudson for 25 years and had the fortune to take what Hudson has given me and not given anything back. And after my kids are, are finally all out of the house and Sue and I are spending time together now and I'm looking for giving back to the city. I have no agenda. I have, to me it's all, it's, it's like going back to school. I mean, it's, it's, I've started digging in about six weeks ago into the topics and it's it's very in-depth and it's a big system and you don't realize it when you just take for 25 years right well we were talking off off camera about the different issues Hudson always seems to have at yeah. least one hot button issue yeah. if not more going on at any single time and dates back to the days of the dog track right. and so forth but um, so what do you see as today the most important issues to be addressed by the City Council, you know, say in the next two-year yeah. term? You know, I think when you look at it, um, you know, of course taxes are a big issue and, and it's going to keep going unless we figure out how to stem the tide. Mm -hmm. um, I think the EMS is going to play a big issue into what we do, even if it gets incorporated into the fire department because it's all money that we have to come up with. and. You mentioned the dog track, and hopefully, the you know the way it sounds, maybe the dog track can help play into that factor. And you know, I, I think we need to grow the tax base industry-wise. So more commercial development. More commercial development, yes. Okay. Well, and I, we've got some set questions about development yep. and annexation and all that, so we'll we'll get to it here. Um, do you see any areas where the city could reduce spending without reducing services? You know, I, I, I actually sat down and talked with Devin about it, and I talked with Diana, or Debbie about it. And it's, when you look at how the, the employees that the city of Hudson has, it's, it's about 85, and you compare it to River Falls, which, I, you know, I like to compare to see where you're at. Uh, River Falls is at about 120 for the same system. So when you look at what Hudson has, from what I can gather and what I've seen, I think Hudson has a pretty lean system. A and I don't think there's any services you can cut to what we have. Right, all right. And I had heard that from somebody else, like some of our departments were, it's a one-person show. Yeah. Other cities have two or even yeah. three people yeah, working. Yeah, Devin was mentioning that a lot of people have assistants down in River Falls. Everybody's got an assistant, you know, and, uh -huh. and here everybody works, which yeah. I think is, it, it's great. It's great to see that. It's great to see people dig in and not complain. Okay, so um, talking about uh, infrastructure, it's a national topic, it's a state topic. Um, 
Do you think the city's plan for maintaining and improving the city's infrastructure is sufficient? Why or why not? Um, looking at what I've dug into, um, I talked with Mike Johnson. I, I have plans to s go spend some time with him and talk about the issues. Um, Hudson's an old town. There's hiccups we're going to have from the old style of what we have here. And as we develop, we're going to keep having to fix the old issues. Right. And, and the other thing that I've been a made aware of is, you know, the water treatment plant kind of dictates what we're going to do in the city. Right. And uh, yes, so you think that the current plan, though, for improving it is sufficient? Yeah, I think they're working on it. I, I know that, uh, talking to Mike, that there's issues coming down the road that we have to pay attention to. Right. And, and every year you got to start, you have to whack away at something. Yeah. You always got to fix. I think that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a big point. So do you think the city of Hudson should continue to annex land? I guess that form of that question kind of assumes that Hudson has been annexing land all along, but it tends to be in fits and starts. So right. what do you see as far as the future for annexation? Well, I, I think controlled growth is a good thing. The question is how much growth. Um, again, annexing land ties to the waste treatment plant. Mm -hmm. How much can we grow before we're, we reach our capacity? Um, I, I do think Hudson should keep growing and if we can reincorporate a business leaving and, and add better tax base to it I think is the best thing for the city. Okay. What sort of redevelopment should take place in Lakefront Park? Yeah I think Lakefront Park's the jewel of Hudson. Yeah. When you come over here you go down on the sunny days in the summer it's it's beautiful down there. You know it's uh, yeah, I guess there's mention of boardwalk down there. Mm -hmm. I think we have to develop it, and I'm sure the scenic waterway plays a part in that. Um, I think it could bring a lot of business to town to help the local business. I mean, we're busy the way it is. It's, yeah. a, it's an issue it's nice to have. Right. But I, I think the downtown Lakefront Park is, is the reason people come to Hudson in the summer. Plus all the boating traffic we get for free. Yeah, you definitely see a difference between yeah. comparing winter to summer yeah, down, yeah, downtown. You do. uh, on any particular <clears throat> weeknight anyway. Yes. So um, speaking of being busy downtown, what can be done about the parking issues in downtown Hudson? Are there again, loaded question because it assumes there are issues yeah. about parking, but how do you see that? Depends if you'd like to walk or not. <laughs> That's right. That's what I've heard before is we don't have a parking problem, we have a walking yeah. problem. And I'm talking to a guy who's got a wife that runs a lot, I know. You can outrun me, that's for sure. Um, you know, I was listening to the, uh, the last meeting, they were talking about parking, mm -hmm. that they're updating the meters, making them more uh, usable. Mm -hmm. um, from what I gather, the parking meters do about $174,000 a year in revenue. Um, they're old. They, they mention that a lot of times they don't work. So you're, you're missing revenue. And I think part of the issue is when you do bring in new meters and get it set up correctly, um, you want to park on Main Street, you're going to pay to park on Main Street. I think that's the way it should be set up and I think they could easily double what they take in. Um, as far as, you know, people talk about parking ramps and everything else and again, you know, if you put a parking ramp up, are people going to use it or are they going to start walking the two or three blocks down the road? So that's the big question. And that, or if you put a parking ramp up, are, you know, does the city pay for it? Did you bring outside source in to do it so it's not a strain to us? Right. Yeah. So um, what I hear in your answer is it also, um, it depends on a pricing thing. Um, if you price it high enough, you're going to get folks, maybe like me, who will say, oh, I can walk the three yeah. blocks and I won't pay the 10 bucks or whatever it is to park right in front of the restaurant. Right. Um, but if you have really cheap parking, I think River Falls for it's a long free. time had, yeah, now it's free. <laughs> it was so yeah. cheap that they just decided, well, our revenue is right. not really worth it and they didn't notice a big issue. But I don't think they've got nearly the restaurants right. and bars um, yeah. downtown like we do. Uh, and I think we're very fortunate to have that issue. Right. You know, right. when you think about it. 
So it comes down to the pricing again. Um, you don't. It sounds like you're not in favor of building a parking ramp unless it could pay for itself. Well, that or else, if you have a plan, say you're going to build a parking ramp, and at a certain point, is it going to be outdated? And if that happens, I mean, can you utilize that structure to make condos or something else above and beyond? I mean, right. put some forethought into what you're looking at and and see what the big picture really is. Okay. That's uh, that sounds good. Now, what what about the EMS? You had mentioned that back. Uh, it's number two to taxes. So. Um, what do you think could be done to solve the EMS issues? Uh, they had the word problems in there, but uh, I think it's all a matter of which end you're talking about. Right. If you're talking about uh, an EMT and wanting to keep a job versus um, you know, uh, a community member versus maybe a taxpayer who wants to see something privatized or whatever. Right. So there's all different ways of looking at this. What's yeah. Paul Malika's uh, view on this? I'm kind of a simple guy. I, I think you really need to, you have to take the personal feelings out of the issue. Mm -hmm. And you have to look at what's best for the city, what's best for the, the person getting the treatment, what's, what's the most cost effective way for us to look at it in the long run. And is it the EMS? I don't know. They're in the process of trying to figure that out. They're trying a new system. We'll see how that works. Um, I really didn't dive into it again when it hit the hot button a year or two ago right uh, that i wasn't even on the radar back then that was that was something in the city i was taking advantage of so i look at it now and i i think people really have to step back and see what the real benefit to the city is having it and 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 like you said maybe you privatize it and it's it's not our issue anymore because okay. it's going to become an expensive issue i think uh Sure, and um, that was one of the things that they said, well, if we're going to have to keep it, it, you know, do we keep it 100% just on the taxes or do right. we look for other funding sources, whether that's grants or yeah. private fundraising or whatever? And, and I know there was mention about that with maybe merging it with the fire department, but, you know, that's all stuff that has to get worked out before you start, because they're looking at building a fire hall, and that's all stuff you have to get worked out before you even think about the fire hall. Right. Right. So, so you're saying maybe look at it in terms of a multi-year plan. And uh, right now the plan seems to be trying this new system. And Correct. It's going to have to be some trial and error before right. um, we venture off into a 10-year yeah. plan. And I think everybody's got to be honest about it. I mean, if, if you don't agree with something, then come up with numbers and prove why. Right. You just can't shoot from the hip. It can't be an emotional issue. And I think that's what it's become. Yeah, it's hard for people to talk about things uh, when if emotion is right. driving the, the discussion. Yeah. It's hard to, it, it becomes more of an argument and a yelling right. match than it is uh, yeah. the discussion. Okay, well, we got through the, the substantive ones, uh, you know, not too quickly. You promised, you said you were more yeah, of a simple yeah. guy, so <laughs> that, look at, you know, try not to make things overly complicated. But what other issues do you feel the council might need to address that we haven't you know, you know uh, un unless you think of something, I, I, I mean, I think the council has a plateful the way it is, mm -hmm. you know. And, and there's going to be things that come up that, you know, people are going to try to bring in for an agenda or something that I, I think it's looked at. But um, I, I, the more I look at this, the more the council, the members of the council, I think they really need to take feelings out and make sure the city and the citizens of the city are first. Okay. That's that's the big issue. Can I can I circle back at another because we got yep. some more time here and everything and I, I, so I don't want to necessarily short you but when we asked about the most important issues you started right off with taxes and trying right. to stem the tide and um, I said that off camera too so right. I totally get that I understand right. being on the school board we're always cognizant of of what's happening with the taxes and what we have is revenue cap the sure. city has, the school district is in a position, we've been underspending for so many years that we're not near our cap, but the city is. Right. And, uh, you know, every year decisions need to be made to keep it under, within that cap without having to go to a referendum to raise um, spending, uh, or raise uh, revenue rather, to right. meet higher spending. You gotta make priority decisions. Right. So um, it's, it gets tough when we get in a position where do you wanna put new pipes along 3rd Street, or do we need a new, um, you know, police officer, another right. police officer? So 
where do you see your priorities? What do you think the primary functions ought to be when it comes to the taxpayers' dollars for the city? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, I mean, I live in District 3, and there's a lot of older people in District 3, and I, and I know when there's tax increases to them, it affects their livelihood. Right. They're retired. They're living on a fixed income. Right. Um, I think when you, you, I think the infrastructure is a, is a, a big deal with Hudson. Um, that's why, you know, I, I mentioned the EMT deal because that plays a big part in what the Hudson, what Hudson does. I mean, the EMT cost, they're figuring over five years, what, a million and a half dollars? I mean, that's a lot of money. Right. So, and I'm not saying the EMT's got to go. I'm just saying we have to look at everything and, and we have to put the city first. And that's how we have to look at it. Right. Um, you, I, you know, when you mentioned the infrastructure, what did you think of the Vine Street project? Did you? I, see? I think it, it's nice. I mean, it's amazing what things cost. Right. You know, and, and from what I gather, there's there's a lot of Vine Street projects that have to get done in this town. Yeah. Right. And you had mentioned about it, Hudson being an old town, which yeah. is absolutely true. It well predates the state. So, yeah. um, you know the. The idea of uh, wood pipes being discovered, <laughs> yeah. you know, we still had some of those. Um, so I think that, yeah, when, when you, those get discovered, it, it, there isn't a lot of choice. It's no, not. there's not. I mean, it's, and that's the problem with an old town because, I mean, for them, it's, it's probably like an archaeological dig. I mean, they're not sure what they're going to find when they get there. Right. And what shape it's going to be in. And, and at that point, you can't say, well, we're not going to fix it. Well, you don't have a choice. Right. It's got to get fixed. And, and then you've got to find your way of paying for it and, right. and then yep. start going back to the basic uh, priorities of right. what you feel, uh, city government. Um, I guess with that, um, there's been other issues in the background, and one that I would just suggest would is, you know, the library and, oh. you know, our surrounding municipalities. Because uh, clearly the city has the highest taxes, we know that, of right. the different municipalities within the school district. And uh, would you like to see a little better cooperation among the municipalities to and, and sharing some of, some of these costs? Well, that I mean, I, I think you know you you look at it and it's it's the town of Hudson, it's the city of Hudson. We're all one group, and again, I think everybody has to put feelings aside and look at the hard numbers and is it worth doing? And if it is, then everybody should be in as one. I mean, I don't, I don't think people should say, well, we don't want to do it because it doesn't benefit us. It's the community we're benefiting, right. and that's how you have to look at it. All right. Well, I, so. it, very good. Um, Paul, thank you for um, coming on the show and telling us about the race. District 3, again, District tell three. us what, uh, what are the boundaries? Where, what area of town are we talking we're, about? We're kind of talking up on the hill, uh, 17th down to roughly summer. Uh, we dip down 7th Street Hill, come pick up 7th and 8th and go back up Vine and then come back across at the high school, what is that, Wisconsin? Okay. And then up Hunter Hill and back in on 17th, so kind of jiggles around up there. Okay. But uh, so everything that would, uh, E.P. Rock? E.P. Rock, yep. Is, is yeah, there, and, there. And, and like you mentioned, the hills. The hill, yeah. yeah. All right, very good. Well, um, we want to remind our voters, uh, election is April 3rd. Uh, there is no primary, but we have two candidates in District 3. So uh, if you have a contested race in your district, please um, get informed on the issues and on the candidates and get out there and vote on April 3rd. And thank you for joining us on another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal.